All right, back on to our bike project here. So, just got back from a helping customer up front. So he was back here working before he left. So he's got the bike halfway stripped down for me already. Good. So here's our, uh, what we got going on here. Get my oil rag go. First thing he's getting oil rag. I'm making a big mess over here. Ah, go. Looks like the oil is making a mess. So there's why the starter is making all kind of damn racket back here. See how we got almost a half inch of a gap between the damn ring gear and the starter bendix. That means when this thing is turning on, I need to disconnect the wire. That's good. When this thing is turning on. The soda engages and pulls the lever over. That gear will start to be spinning before it engages into this teeth. Because you're only supposed to have about an eighth of an inch clearance there, 80 to 100,000 common. But <clears throat> in these older bikes, I've seen 316s. That thing is over 3 eighths of an inch in there, you can see it. So that's so far, that's so deep in there, it starts to spin in it before it engages, and that's what all the grinding noise is all about. So, this is all stock parts, but something is not correct. This ring gear is cut way back on this basket. Get about an eighth of an inch drop between here and here. To your later bikes, it's flush, so this is worse. So, I don't know what exactly the mix and match of parts are it's here, but it obviously does not work. The other thing I see is this washer is below the surface of the gasket. This is flush, okay. So that is all the way out. So you can't move the shaft any further out, it's all stock. So I don't understand why that gear is so deep in there. It should not be that deep. Looks like it's a new Bendix in there. And you can already see how the teeth are getting all chewed up in there. When it's spinning when it engages, it's doing the same thing in the ring gear too. All right, so I don't know what the deal is on this early bike where it's made like this, but it is not going to fly. So what are we going to do about it is going to be the question. I'm not sure what to do about it. I know some of these plungers had different hole locations in them. Maybe there's a different hole that we can put this in that will shove this further out. If this, this stop hole was further up, it would move the whole thing out further and it would gauge correctly. So I have to go see if there's some plungers that I got that are got double holes in them. That would take care of the problem if we had that. Because if this thing was like out here, <coughs> instead of being way back there, if it was right here, that would be enough to make it work. And that's basically the distance of a hole by doing that. As I recall, these levers are all the same. I'll have to go check the book to make sure these levers are all the same. Maybe there's a different lever. The other option is you can bend this lever, you know, modify it a little bit. Right. Something needs to be done. So I'll have to figure that out. It's not, something is not correct in there. All right, so now I'm getting here to see a lot better. Looks like he wiped up the oil. So it was leaking on the top layer of the gasket between the casket and the cylinders where the leak was. It was a little bit right here where my finger is, and then just above the gasket parting lip over here, the case parting lip, was the second place it was leaking. But 90% of it was right here in the front. And it was just going along the gasket right of here, trailing on down, dropping down backside and puddling up to here. That's where our leak was at. So this leak here is not leaking no more, and the push rod cover seemed to calm down for now, but until you ride it and get pressure, you don't know what it's going to do. So I'm going to definitely put a new seal there, even though it's a brand new one. We'll change that out and do all this other stuff too. And these gaskets here, I'm going to use a different guy gasket. So this is the first set I've had that leaked, but... It only leaks on the one, but 
one's enough for me. I've had every style gasket made leak and I've had every one not leak, so which one's the best one to use? Who knows? Whichever one doesn't leak for your, what you're using, I guess. That's pretty much how I go. Well, on my bike, I don't use gaskets. It takes care of the problem. No gasket, no leak. All right, so he's got the top motor mount off now. So I gotta pull the bolts off from this side. And I can go to the other side and the exhaust pipe. If I can work around it, I'm not gonna pull it. I don't know if I can work around it though. We'll find out. Okay, so. I've got my torque wrench here. I've got my quarter draw clicky wrench. And then we got a real torque wrench. With a flexible head on it that I can get anywhere with just about, but not everywhere. So let's see if I can just loosen these up with this. Spark plug, get it out of the way. The more stuff you get out of the way, the better. Well, it's burning a little bit. Fairly dry, just a tick of oil on there. The residue, not too bad. Okay, I'm going to use a little quarter drive ratchet. Let's go ahead and pull this off. got assembly lube on it. Imagine that. It's always fun you gotta take apart some you just gotta put together. At least you can see how everything works together. That's how you find out. Trying to think how many of those gasket sets I've sold over the years without having any problems. And I haven't had any problem with shovel heads before, just Evos, but yeah, it's been a lot. Probably over 100 sets of these I've done at least. No problems. We got one. One's all you need to be a problem.
Do the base nut while we're in here. Torque wrench for the base nut. That's tighter. This is looser. Don't hit the fender. Can't get in there very well. Extend a wrench. Crash bars in the way. There we go. There's plenty of levers now. Done on this side, time to take a show to the other side. This was the easy side. The other side is going to be more fun, a lot more fun. And more stuff to deal with on this side. So, this side we got push rods, distributor, exhaust pipes in the way, all kinds of junk. Keeps disappearing. Yeah, this one will work. You put everything in a common spot, in my case, right here by the front wheel. You'll find your parts. So as long as you always do everything the same, It'll disappear. I put the cover over that little screw so it doesn't roll away and lose it. So you have to get this out of the way so you can get to the end of there. Let's see. <coughs> Strength to do that. Good. <clears throat> Gonna have strong fingers to push them down like that. Okay. One advantage of a kicker, I can turn the bike over. Looks like they're loosened up enough already. Cheater wrench. Okay, let's see how tight these are. I know I put them together really, really tight. Let's see how much they are. They're pretty tight. They're not unscrewing. Nope. <clears throat> yep, they were tight. It's good. So these are the easy ones to do, so the screw will go all the way up inside the push rod. <clears throat> and I can do it up in my fingers because it's still all new parts. There we go. 
So if that's the exhaust, we lay that in line as first. That's the offending leaking one. So we're definitely going to change that out. Should do the next one. Let's see how tight this is. Tight. Next one. Okay, now I got access to get the bolts out of here. So it looks like I can work around the exhaust pipe. Oh, he's already got the head off the pipe, so that makes it easier. Okay, where's our torque wrench at? So once again, we're using our double box wrench for our torque. Give it just a little bit of a jerk, it will pop freer, easier. If you just push real, real hard and all of a sudden it pops, you can hurt yourself. If you give it kind of a jerk, it'll pop it. It'll spike the torque up and let it come off. Less busted knuckles. Ah. Ah. Hurts my head. Keep hitting this brake lever up here. This rack's too low. Nails me. This one I'm going to use the wrench on all the way down. That's going to slow things down. Ah, damn. That is extremely sharp. My finger is going to be raw by the time that's done. So I get my finger from being here, I need to hold out further so I don't keep nailing myself on that damn thing. Got myself again. The bolts just tie enough, you can't do it by hand. That's normal. Could put something on top of that, but that'd be too easy. Wouldn't want to do that. It's just, just enough. It won't come. Oh well.
we're gonna fall in a second. That came out slow. My finger ain't too happy about all that rubbing on top of that point. Okay, this one's easy because we got the ratchet here. Ratchet works pretty good because I ground it down like I do my wrenches. And I also dull this out a little bit over here so it's not so sharp so it doesn't bang into stuff and damage it. The only thing you do is modify. Okay, so we have a gasket here. You gotta watch this tube when we pop it. Appears to be tight. That means the head gasket's got a good seal on it. It's going to be the killer of me. Get a stud in there. There it goes. The gasket is doing it. All right. So there's our head. See a little bit of oil in the combustion chamber. Not too much, but a little bit. Obviously, we need a new gasket. Used to be a piston in there. It's a good sign. All right, where is my Get a wrench here? We're leaving the last one there as hard as hell to get to. Well, let's see what we're going to do to get into that thing because that's going to be interesting to get in there. All right. Looks like we can get in there. Extra leverage here. So you just hook this into your wrench like this. And you get a little extra in. A little bit of leverage. Ball point you get one flat in there is all you can get. That's enough. I'm lucky the nuts loose on the studs so I can unscrew my fingers. Good to go. Alright, so now we're ready to pull it out. So you can see what's going on here. See a little bit of oil in there. Not too much, but a little bit. See how the hone finish is doing. You can see we're running rich. It's black. Okay, so I just gotta pop this up. It's already loose. Look at that. Gaskets don't have much stick them to them. So now I'm gonna see what's what was bad about this. Why we had to pull this thing apart. Yeah. 
I'm going to pull a spark plug on this one. The whole crank sucked down a little bit. So it looks a little cleaner. I don't see any oil in it. Okay, pull this thing up. Okay, so it's leaking right through here. Gasket surface feels real nice and smooth. I don't feel any nicks or anything in it. Looks pretty good in the light, too. So, why was it leaking? Any reason I was leaking? Feels even. Obviously, it was leaking though. It was leaking on the top surface. from the uh, case. Just a little groove right here. But it wasn't leaking on the bottom of the gasket, it was leaking on the top of the gasket. bubbles up on the gasket like water. <laughs> kind of different looking. See nothing wrong with the gasket. Ain't nothing wrong with anything. Except it was leaking. That was the only problem we had. It just was leaking. So what I'm going to do I'm going to put a sealer on it. Put it back together. Nothing wrong with the gasket. It's visible. Obviously, if something's a little low, it's not getting compression on the gasket or something. Something is making it not not seal right there. It's not like it's gushing out. It's just seepage and it builds up and then gushes. So I'm going to wipe all the stuff, clean all up, get the oil residue off of everything. I'm going to go ahead and uh, brake clean it right there. I'm going to put some three bond sealer on there. I'm going to give me a new tube. I'm going to goop up this whole gasket and then put it back together. And it should be good to go after that, I think. All right, so I'm going to clean all this stuff up. We'll be back. I'm going to scrape all this off the head gasket, too. All right. Okay, got things kind of cleaned up a little bit. Pull off the gasket. This is one of those James gaskets. So this is what they look like when you're ripping apart. So you can see how they stick pretty good to the surface, so they don't they stay in there pretty good sealing-wise. So we'll scrape that off. So I got my new three bond sealer here. This is the one I use. This one I've been using over here is old and just about done. 
too hard. It's just a brand new tube. And to get the correct gaskets, I gotta get a brand new James gasket set. So the X is the one that has all the good metal gaskets in it. The non-X one has the blue Teflon crappy gaskets in it. So we're putting a good one in here. So I robbed that to get the gaskets. It just so happens I sold my extra set today to a customer, so I don't have them today. I don't have them tonight. Had them this morning. Okay, so under here, the surface through here looks really, really nice and smooth. There's nothing really wrong with that. Lights down again. So that all looks feel good. So you just take and run a file across it and make sure there's nothing at all sticking up and there's nothing. Okay, so over here, I clean this all up. Break clean the surface. So we got a little bit of a transition gap and distance between here and here on these two surfaces like you always do on the parting lips. Usually I run a file through those when I put them together. I don't know if I didn't do it on this one or what. So if I didn't, that would explain where some of the air, where it's coming from. The gasket you would think would have took that up, but these surfaces are never perfect. So let's see how much of an air we got on here. There's a little bit, and that is where it was leaking. Yep. Didn't leak in the front, though. There's a lot more air in the front than the back. surface some more so you can see what the air is right now right here even this rag is leaving residue on here so you can see how it's high right here and low right here it was leaking through here and then right here at the end it was leaking more like right across with my fingers over here which shouldn't have mattered way over there, but it did. And you see how this one here is high on the other case over here. There's always a slight difference in these things. So. Hmm. That would be nice and dry. I just got done cleaning that. This rag is not making it perfect. Yep. I'm gonna try the sealer on there, see what happens. It's got a little bit of crap coming up. Normally I knock that edge off, so it looks like I didn't do it this time. It's costing me now, right? All right, so we got all these things all cleaned up. Okay, so I'm going to scrape the uh, other side of the cylinder here with my gasket scraper right here. Clean things up. Try to refrain from putting your fingers in front of the scraper. It will cut the piss out of you if you get close to it. Okay, looks good.
Okay, nice and clean. A little bit of assembly lube on the gasket surface there. Come off the head bolts. Okay, that's good and clean. Got me a brand new cork. Put that in a hole right down there. Just clean off that oil that's all around the whole hole. I'm not going to have a good opportunity like this later to do it later. Head's ready to go back on. Cylinder's ready to go back on too. So here's our gasket. Wrap it down. And this stupid red silicone, I never do believe does much of anything. All it does is slide around and usually pooches out the side of the cylinder and you just see it laying out on the outside surface. So, I never trust it to do all that much anyway. It's the black stuff that was doing our sealing. In this case, we need something more. So, need something clean to wipe on around here. Try to get most of all the residue off of this thing. Whatever is loose is going to come off. Let's take it off right now. This is where it was leaking. See the shiny spot between the doll spot right there? That's where the gasket was leaking. It was never touching right there. It always had a little bit of a gap. That's why it's not you're not seeing a compression mark on it. Both sides are that way. You see a little bit right up to here where my nail is, but right here there's nothing right there. From here over there's nothing. This is on the bottom side. This was on the top side. The top side was leaking a lot more. She has a big, big, lot bigger gap between here and here. Right there, it was never touching. If you look at the light, you can see how glossy is. So that's where our leak was at. Everything else in this gasket was dull. Just this area right here was the part not sealing. All right. So I'm not sure why that is like that, but it is. Mm. 
Yep. Definitely a little issues there. All right, so we need to get a little bit of uh, something on there to stop that from leaking there. So, I'm trying to think what we're going to do about this problem. Figure out what we're going to do to stop it for no more again. Definitely a little bit lower on the case through there. So I got just as big a step on the front, it didn't leak in the front. If any, it's more on the front still. Why is the gasket now leaking in the other spot? You can see the same indent marks, see the same low spot. Except it looks like this was completely covered the gasket here. This looks low through here, but it wasn't leaking. Oh well. You know, I doubt if you measure anything different than the gasket surface. But there's something different. Don't know what. Something. Okay. So we'll go ahead and open up the new gasket set. So we care about the stuff in this pack right here. Good, so gotta be careful. So I need one of these. And these are a new style base gaskets. The new format material gasket. See how they stuck together already really good. That gives you a vote of confidence there, doesn't it? Uh, I don't really like these new style gaskets. It's a lot thinner than the other one, too. Oh, yeah. Definitely a big difference in thinness. I like these. These ones squish way out, and I don't trust them too much yet. I haven't used these ones very much. These ones I used a lot of. Yeah. yeah, I don't really like these things. I'm going to reuse this old one. I like these ones better. Head gasket's good. We're going to use that, though. All right, I'm going to put some sealer on this thing, like I said. We're not just going to throw it back together the way it was. We are going to put some new sealer on here. That stuff. Keep changing the containers. Alright. 
So, first thing I do is I start rolling up the surface here. Keep all the air out of it. You squeeze it right there, leave some of the pressure. And you can pop it. Okay. You clean up, I'll be right back.